I'm going to preach from a subject of we made it. We made it. Hallelujah. Everyone that's sitting here, we made it. Amen. But then there's a question. Now what? Uh-oh. We made it. Now what? Some of you went through an uphill journey in 2022. You might have went through this and that, death, sickness. There's a lot of things you might have dealt with in 2022. And then when the clock struck 12 last night, you were overjoyed, if you were up, right? <laughs> you were overjoyed and like, Lord, thank you. I'm glad I made it through the year. I'm ready for another year. But I, I would be remiss if, if I didn't realize that, guess what? Some people are on, on the other side. They had a great 2022. Everything went right. But yet and still, now and as we enter the first day of 2023, you're still looking to see what the new year may hold. And so when you do this, regardless of the spectrum of, of okay, I'm happy to be leaving, I'm, I'm nervous, guess what? You still made it to another year, and we should give God praise. Amen. Because we did. And so, yes, we've made it, but now what? Now what? As we look at the rest of the year, now what? Today, I want to give you four points. I hope you're taking notes, right? Or if not mental notes, you don't want to jot it down because sometimes we forget things, right? I want to give you four things that we're going to learn from Noah today that we should take as we walk into something new, similar to this year that we have entered. So it's going to be four things. And I thought it was paramount and relational to preach from the first book of the Bible, given that it's the first Sunday in a new year. And so in this first book, what we're going to see in this pericope is that Noah, we're going to look at Noah and we're going to see what he did on his New Year's Day after the flood. So I'll tell you there will be four points. The first point is be real. Be real. So many people, and, and, and as I picked up some youth this morning, they were like, oh, yeah, new year, new me. Right? That's what we say a lot of different times. You know, you're going into a new year. Uh, but somebody say, be real. <laughs> be we we, we got to be real. If you haven't made changes in your mind, then you are the same person. The Bible says it like this. We are transformed by the renewing of our mind. And so what does that mean, Reverend? Well, if you haven't changed anything in your mind, if you're not focused on your goals, if you're not truly accomplishing things and not just talking about it, right? If you don't have a strategy to get to where you are going, guess what? You're the same person and nothing has changed. Here in Genesis chapter 8, we see that when Noah removed the covering from the ark and, and looked out, the earth was finally dry and nothing was there. The Lord told him, his sons and animals, to get off the ark and to be fruitful and multiply. But let us not forget, this is a real person. Noah was at the age of 601. That's what the Bible said. <laughs> And at this moment, right, Noah had to be real. Hey, I'm 600. My, my kids are 100 plus years old and, 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 and nothing is out here. And guess what? You guys made it to a new year. We don't know what, Jan what January 15th, April is going to hold and we have to be real. What does that mean? What did Noah do? When Noah got off the ark, he had to be obedient. When he first took that step into the new year, we have to be what? obedient. We have to do what God has us to do, and we have to get to work. It was quintessential, right, for him and his sons to do what God told them to do. Hmm. And so what, what are you saying? I'm saying that as we have, thank God, stepped foot into 2023, we have to do what God tells us to do. First, starting with our relationship with him. Then after that, working on ourselves. There are some things that we have to prioritize to do for ourselves. Then after that, what, what, what else do, did God lay on your heart to do? Well, I'm thinking about going to school, Reverend. Why are you still thinking about it? Well, I'm think, you keep thinking about it. No, 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 no. Be real. It's time for us to do that in 2023. So the thing is, when he came off, guess what else? The children had to go to work. So, so, so part of our first point about being real is that it's important that we know that we have to get to work. Not just us, but our household. The Bible teaches us to number our days. And so in 2023, don't let this be a year of shoulda, coulda, woulda. Oh, well, 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 maybe I, 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 no, 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 no. It should be a year of action and a year of action for God. And guess what? When we do this action, it's going to lead to something that you're going to hear about later on this year, and that's called joy. Hallelujah. And so when we learn about this joy, before we move on, I, I, I want to let you know this, that, that don't let anyone steal that joy. 
because things are going to happen. So somebody say be real. Be real. E every day, like we're just going to be real. Every day isn't sunshine and rainbow, right? Like I don't know what has happened, what could happen. It could be, oh, I'm in love with this person, and I think I'm going to be with them forever, but now, you know, I got this, this paperwork. Don't let it steal your joy. It could be something that the kids are starting to cut up and now the police done called me and everything. Don't let it steal your joy. You wouldn't believe this. I got a call from the doctor the other day and they say that such and such is sick and they, they, they might not. Don't let it steal your joy. Why? Because the joy isn't caught up on how I feel today or, well, you look good today, thank you. It's not caught up on that. It's what's on the inside. And if it's on the inside, regardless how trouble may come, I can still have joy. I can be like the author of the song, say, it is well with my soul. Yes. Why is it well with my soul? Because it doesn't look good. Reverend, you don't know what, what I've been going through. You don't know what the kids, you don't know about all. It's well with my soul. Why? Because of joy and because of the God that's inside of me. Mm -hmm. And if I rely on that and if I stay in touch with that and be real, then guess what? My 2023 will be okay. I can have joy. Hallelujah. Our first point was be real. Be real. Our second point is be productive. Be productive. After you get real, right, you got to get real with yourself. You got to get real with things. You got to get real with the situation. It is time to be productive. When you do research on Noah, you will see that he was a man of the soil. That's what the Bible says. And, and when he came off the ark, he built a vineyard. And when he built the vineyard, he got drunk. We'll come back to that later on. We'll come back to that <laughs> later on. And, 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 and his son, Japheth, was a man of agriculture and farming. His second son, Shem, was a man of livestock, and, and he was a shepherd. And, and the third son, son, Ham, he was a jokester. We're going to talk about him later, too. We're going to get to him. But he was into construction. What are you seeing here with a common thing? That what made Adam successful, that brought him over to the new year, he didn't just keep it. He gave it to his sons. He gave it to the offsprings. And so what am I saying? This is another shameless plug to everybody out there that might have some offspring. Pass something on to them. Pass something on productive to your son, your daughter, your grandkids. I don't have kids yet, but I got a niece and a nephew. I'm passing something on. The first thing is Jesus. Yes. And after that, pass something else on. Pass that knowledge, that wisdom down, because it's a crime and a shame if I got to go through the same thing that my great-granddaddy went through. Why? Because a lot of times, us as people, we don't open our mouths. We're shameful. But part of, of being real, right, and being productive is that I got to tell somebody something. I got to tell my nephew, hey, nephew, don't do that. I did that same thing, and this is what it's going to do. They're going to make their own mistakes, but the thing is, at least you can say that you did what you needed to do for your, your family. And pass something off that's, that, that's worthwhile. Don't pass off, well, he sure can drink a 40 and, and drink Hennessy and play some spades real good. That's the only thing that you're passing off? No. No, we're not passing off those negative things. I'm talking about passing off something that you can be proud of. Passing those things off for the next generation. So the second point is we have to be what? Productive. Okay, we, we together, right? So the first thing was what? <laughs> be real. The second thing is be productive. be productive. I'm not going to be before you long. You participate. All right. So be productive. We have to be productive. And through research and experience being a youth pastor here and, and being a licensed and ordained minister, the number one hindrance on personally being productive, can you guess it? Is you. Hmm. You are that hindrance. When, you, when, you, when you're trying to be productive, you can try to blame a lot of people, but a lot of times you got to look introspectively. And you got to say, okay, well, what's really going on here? And, and so as I did research, one of the number one things is, is a thing called self-pity. Self-pity. Self-pity does a, a, a few things, but one of the first things that it does is that it destroys responsibility. Hmm. Self-pity destroys responsibility. Let me give you an example. I didn't know my dad. He left and, and, and said he was going to get some milk. Never came back. And now I got four kids. So, hold on, I love my dad. Dad, I love you. I was going to say I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I know my dad. But I'm just using this as an example, right? Because the thing is, I didn't know my daddy. He went and got some milk. Now I got five kids. I tell you, I'm having kids. So I got five kids now. And so now I got these children, and I don't know what to do with them because I didn't have my daddy. Wait, wait. That's called self-pity. Why am I self-pity? Because I didn't know my daddy, and then now I'm keeping this cycle going, and I'm doing the same thing with the next generation. 
That's self-pity. Because I'm gonna tell you one thing. I'm gonna tell you one thing. I'm not a motivational speaker. A motivational. I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a preacher, right? And one thing I'm gonna tell you is that even though I might not have known my daddy, I know my daddy. Hmm. Even though I might not have had my father in my life, now that I have some offspring, guess what? What does the Bible say? The Bible says I should leave an inheritance to my children and my children's children. My Bible tells me how I should treat my wife, how I should treat my kids. Do not provoke my kids. Oh, that's in the Bible now. And that's how I learn. So the thing is, for us to say and, and, and have this self-pity, let me give you another example. Maybe it's just me because I'm from Georgia, right? Uh, well, these people at that job don't like me, and they let me go. That's self-pity because guess what? You were late every day. And then you got in a wreck three times on the forklift. So, yeah, yes, you need to get let go. But that self-pity because you want to not hold up to what you're supposed to do. So what am I saying? This is a New Year's message because in 2023, let's not have this self-pity. Let's be real. Let's be productive. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank yeah. you, Lord. Self-pity. Self-pity will also cause you to lose self-awareness. And if you lose self-awareness, then that, that leads to loss of self-confidence. I know a lot of people that walk with their head now has lost self-confidence. Why? Because of that self-pity. When you stay in the pity too long and you have that pity party, then you forget who you are. But Reverend Williams come today to remind you who you are. Yeah. You may have come in, like I said, maybe heavy laden, right? You may have come in with a lot on your mind, but leave it here today and give it to God. The Bible says, cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. And you might not have heard it in 2023, but you were loved. God loves you and so do I. You're beautiful, you're intelligent, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You got to know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You got to know that you are anointed. You got to know that you're not alone. So many people, especially around the holidays, I mean, I was physically alone, but so many people around the holidays, I say that I, I missed my flight, weather was bad. But guess what? I can stand here flat-footed to tell you that I was not alone. And why is that? Because Jesus left us something, and that's a comforter. Hmm. And so even in those darkest nights, you might be married to somebody, but guess what? They sleep and you going through. Come on, some of y'all know what, it, what I'm talking about. You worried and troubled and they over there snoring. But guess what? You still not alone. Why? Because God left you a comforter. You have somebody there by your side. And I want to encourage you and remind you that for all of 2023. The last part about a pity party is that a person always sends out an invitation. Always. Why? Because it's no fun when you're celebrating alone. Nobody want to just have a pity party by themselves. So in 2023, if we're supposed to be productive, we cannot accept invitations for other people's pity party. Somebody say, not this year. Not this year. Not this year. I mean, I might have did it a little bit last year. But guess what? You can keep that. But not just keep it. Give it to God. Give it to God. Sister, I know, I, I know your neck hurting. Brother, I, I, I know this happened to you. But every time I see you, you got to tell me about all the medicines you want. Give it to God. Give it to God, not this year, not this year, hallelujah. But, but okay, y'all say, oh, he just up there talking. But what does the Bible say, Jonathan? Okay, let's go. I'm glad you asked. Philippians chapter 3, verse 14 says, I press, somebody say press. Press. I press on toward the goal to win the prize of which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This is not a New Year's message to say that it's going to be sunshine and rainbows every day, but I am here to encourage you to keep pressing. You have to keep pressing even in this year in 2023. You may be carrying something. I don't know what it is, right? If, if, if I'm stepping on your toes, there ain't nothing but the Holy Spirit convicting me, right? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, it's like a two-edged sword because as, as, as I'm saying it, it's convicting me. Yeah. I don't know what it is. But the thing is, we have to keep pressing. You, you, you may be in a good place like, oh, I'm everything. Still, keep pressing. If anything happens... Good, bad, how trouble may come. Keep pressing, and you have to be productive. So that was our second point. Our second point was be productive. Our third point is be responsible. Uh-oh, it's a tough one here. Be responsible. So it was, it was be real, be productive, and be responsible. So if I can, I tell you I'm not going to be before you long, but I got to read you something else. I have to read you something else. This is still first book of the Bible in Genesis. Genesis chapter 9, verses 22 through 25. Genesis chapter 9, verses 20 through 25. I don't want you to think I'm just reading anything. 20, verse 20 through 25. And it reads, And Noah began to be a farmer, and he planted a vineyard. Then he drank of the wine and was drunk. 
and became uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father mm. and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and went backwards and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned away, and they did not see their father's nakedness. So Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done to him. Then he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants, he shall be to his brethren. I want you just to think on that for a moment. And so this is a part of Noah's life that out of all my years being in church, I, I, I never heard it really exegesis. I never heard it really pulled out to make it relational. And, 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 and whether we was in Sunday school, vacation, Bible school, we didn't talk about this. We talk, so he was a real person. These, these aren't characters, Bible characters. These are people that lived and breathed on the earth. And so let's be clear about this. When, why did he get drunk? Why was it? You got to think about that. Let me tell you why. Noah had to endure the ridicule of building this ark when there was no rain in the forecast. Everybody was talking about him, laughing. And what else? Then he had the arduous task of getting all these animals. And after the animals and the rain came, let's let, we just went through COVID. And every day, shacked up in the house with the same people wasn't pleasant. So Noah was on this ark, this vessel, with just his family and all these animals. So Come on now, we, we, we're talking about something real now. We all grown people here. And lastly, he came out, thanked the Lord on dry ground, but everything that he knew before, the building, the people, everything else, was dead and gone. What type of mindset do you think he, he had at that moment? So he did what he did because he was used to it, which was what? He returned to what he knew before. He planted a vineyard and he got drunk. So I, you know what? L let me say it again. He planted a vineyard and got drunk. He went back to what he knew before. Now I'll relate that to your life, it's 2023. When things get tough and, and, and when we have to be real and be productive, are we going to go back to those things? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for another year. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be here in your presence. As we pray right now, Lord, please touch our minds, touch our hearts, touch our bodies. You know what it is. Whatever it is that, that, that makes us feel comfortable to have that temporary gratification, whatever it is, Lord, we lay it at your feet. And whenever trouble may come, we want to turn to you and not those things and activities. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I felt it paramount to talk about that. Why? Because we need to have it in our spirit, not me in 23. Right. Well, whatever that may have been, Noah returned to what he knew. And, and, and right now, under the sound of my voice, I want you to realize that whatever it may be that gave you that, we need to give it to God. That temporary gratification with mental health. One thing about it, family, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's, it's something that's real. We don't talk about it enough in church, but we're talking about it today. It's real. And if you need help, first of all, yes, pray about it. But God allowed these doctors, these professionals to go to school to, to help you. Why? Because I, 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 I may be a Christian, but I'm still dealing with conflict. I may love the Lord, but I I'm, I'm, I'm still have something on my shoulder. I have a lot of pressure at school, at work, in this relationship. And guess what? Talking about it, right? Yes, I can talk to God, but talking about it with a professional can probably help me get through another day. Can I get an amen? amen. I mean, we, just, we just being real. That's the first point, right? Amen. We just being real. So it's okay to seek help. But now, in order to be responsible, we got to take care of ourselves. That's why I'm bringing it full circle. That's why we're talking about Noah and the mental health, because if I'm going to be responsible, I got to be real with myself. Somebody say be responsible. Be responsible. So that's being responsible. We see being responsible how we should with Noah, addressing different things, taking care of it, because life is real. So after that, right, uh, it's another example that jokes the son of his, right? So after all Noah, his father had did, and he found his father naked, what did he do? He wanted to go run and tell somebody else. He, 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 didn't, he didn't bother covering him up. He wanted to go laugh ah, and tell his brothers. So uh, one thing I want to encourage you, in 2023, we cannot think that the demise or the degrading of someone else is funny. Hmm. 
Y'all know what I mean, especially some of my younger ones. We, we on social media and we laughing at different things. It's the demise and the degrading of someone else is not funny. What should we do? We should cover them. Yeah. How so? In prayer. We should always pray for our sisters and our brothers, no matter what is going on. Where is that in the Bible? Right here in the latter part of Luke chapter 12, verse 48, it says, From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. What is that saying? That's saying that we're all blessed. God has blessed us with something else, but to basically simply put in different versions, it says to whom much is given, much is required. So why is it that I'm, I'm acting like I don't have nothing and I'm just living? No, if I'm given a lot, then I need to hold my head up. I need to be a man and a woman of standard and I need to act as such. And we need to be prudent over what God has given us in 2023. Amen. That's our third point. Be responsible. Be responsible. So you guys are still with me. We know the first point was what? Be real. Next, we have to be productive. productive. Next, the one we just talked about is what? Be responsible. Our last point, so you still with me. Our last point is be grateful. Be grateful. This is a cause and effect, and it was shown in our key passage in uh, Genesis chapter 8. And it's verses 19 through 21, but I want you to go with me, right? Verses 19 through 21, but it's a cause and effect. Let's read it. Verse 19 and 20 is the cause. It says, all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on land, came out of the ark, one kind after another. Verse 20, then Noah built an altar to the Lord. And taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. That's the cause. What's the effect? So because he did that, the effect, verse 21, the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground because of humans. Even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. And never again will I destroy all living things as I have done. In 2023, we should all possess an attitude of gratitude. For just the sake of thought, if Noah would not have built the ark hmm. and God did not smell the pleasing aroma, where would we be? Just think about it, right? Be because he did that and he, uh, the Lord smelled the, the aroma, he made that covenant to never do that again. But if we had, he had not done that, Okay, I'm going to keep going. Because the Bible also says this, that we are inclined to do evil from childhood. So I got to ask you this one question. It's, it's, it's what, 10, 11 o'clock, whatever time it is on the first day of the new year. Have you told the Lord thank you? Hmm. I mean, you might have celebrated. Oh, we made it. Happy New Year. Old Lang Syne. But have we told the Lord thank you? In the hours of this new year, have we shown gratitude in any shape, form, or fashion? Have we sent up? A praise offering. So for the sake of just you thinking, I like people to think when I preach, right? If Noah did not send up the offering, that covenant might not have happened. So if you're not praising and thanking God, what could that not lead to? Hmm. Who else could that affect by you not praising and thanking God? Also, thank you, Holy Spirit. This is something, and, and we're going to probably address this later on in the year. Let's go back to, I think I got a little time. Let's go back to verse 20. Verse 20 said, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. Pastor, if you don't mind, I just got to address no. this. Uh, he didn't say that he took the dirty animals. He didn't say that. He didn't say he took the dirty birds, right? It said clean. So what does that mean? He didn't have much because he was on that ark, but he gave God his best. Yeah. And so in 2023, are we giving our best? God has blessed us, and, and we don't talk about a lot in church, but we're talking tithes and offering, right? Are we giving our first fruits? And you say, well, I don't make that much. That okay, but are you giving your time? Are you giving your talents? Some of you got, have so many talents that God has blessed you with. And I understand you busy. I understand word, baby, soccer, got it. But can you give God? that clean offering? Can you give him a little bit of the best that you have? Whether that's, shameless plug, I'm the youth pastor here. I need riders on Friday to help with the van, 
right? Like we do a lot of different things. But guess what? You might say, hey, I can't do this, but I can do that. You got to give God your best. Why? Because he gave his best to you. Yeah. He gave his only begotten son to you. And so how is it that we sit here? We, 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 the, the praise team do an amazing job, but we just sit here and look like they're doing it for us. No, they're doing it to God. Yeah. Might as well join in and be grateful and have that gratitude. Because if not, just like Noah, if he didn't give that offering, what would happen? What, 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 if, what if you're just sitting there and you don't want to say amen or thank you, God, and next thing you know, well, well since you don't want to use your mouth, I'll just I'll take that from you. Hey, hmm, okay. We have to be grateful and have that gratitude. As I was preparing, one thing I said to myself is that in 2023, I'm going to be afraid to be around somebody that don't know how to say thank you. Hmm. If somebody got to force you to say thank you, I don't think I even want to be in your company. I can say I love you from a distance. Right. I love everybody. But you can't have those people around you because it's about that attitude of gratitude. As I get ready to close, it reminds me of a picture that was in uh, Alex Haley's office. Alex Haley, the author of uh, Roots. And as he was getting interviewed by the New York Times in his office was a picture of a turtle on a fence post. And so the reporter said, hey, Mr. Haley, why is it that you have a big picture of a turtle sitting on a fence post? Alex Haley then said, I have that there as a constant reminder every day that that turtle doesn't have what it needs to get up there by himself. Yeah. That turtle is no way in the world that a turtle can end up on a fence post on his own accord. So what am I saying to everyone under the sound of my voice? Be grateful. Hmm. Right? I don't care where you at. I came from here. I came from nothing. Now I'm here. I'm self-made. No, you're not because of God. You made it. Oh, well, yes. it was these people. God put those people there for you, and you need to be grateful because just as soon as you get it's there, it could be taken away. That's another reason why I say pray for people because you don't know what people are going through. Yeah. So every morning in 2023, before you complain about anything, I want you just to say thank you. Just say just two words, thank you. Can, can somebody say thank you right now? Thank you, God. Thank you. I just want you to say thank you. Why? Because guess what? I woke up this morning. That's, that's the reason to shout right there. I woke up this morning. Somebody died today. Don't ask me who, 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 who. I don't know somebody, right? You go to the hospital, somebody died today, but I'm, I'm here. Guess what? Somebody didn't know. They don't know how to put their own clothes and shoes on today, but you at least had a well-made-up mind to come to the house of the Lord. So I'm going to say thank you. you. You're going through something. You're going through an a, a ending relationship. You're going through whatever. Lord, I still thank you. Lord, I'm going to be grateful no yeah. matter how it comes. Because guess what? That's that word that we learned in this yeah. year, joy. I can still have joy. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. And so I want you to do that every day. And so this time next year, Lord willing, I want you to tell me the difference between this year, 2023, compared to the one you had in 2022. And one thing I believe is that when you view every morning as a blessing, Hmm. and you say thank you when you first wake up, the rest of your day is going to go a little different. You're going to have a different perspective on that Amen. entire day. So as I close, it was, it was four things. So in 2023, yes, we made it, but now what? You know what the now what is? We have to be real. We have to be productive. We have to be responsible. And we must be grateful. Amen. Amen. Thank you, and God Amen. bless. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me Mount of thy